having the Lamaroo sisters on our show oh. in studio for the all women's edition as well as right after the gold medal victory. So it's official. You're stepping away from the game. How does it feel, ladies? Do you feel any different today? <laughs> Uh, I mean, well, we've known this decision has been coming for a couple of weeks now. And so it's, I guess today it's been a little bit bittersweet. All the kind messages that we've been getting from teammates, friends, family members, it's been pretty touching uh, throughout the day. So we've just been trying to hold in our ugly cry. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is this time the right time for you to make this announcement? Well, I think um, just the past year and a half has been um, a lot of life changes going on we obviously both had kids after 2018 and then we've lost a couple grandparents in this past this past year and it's really just opened our eyes to different ways we want to spend our time and um to be honest we've been giving so much of our time to usa hockey and the next camp and the next tournament and um we know what it takes to to be elite and how we want to train and so um, I think we're just ready for that, that next chapter in life and start prioritizing our time in a different way than we ever have before. You guys accomplished so much in the game of hockey. Now that you're retired and you look back, what memories stand out? What moments stand out? Who stands out when you think back of your great careers? Well, I think uh, teammates wise, uh, I think when we first started, Angela Juro and uh, Julie Chu obviously come to mind. I think they played a big role in shaping how we approached. We were so hyper competitive and focused when we were younger. And I think they helped uh, bring out that you can, you can have fun, you can be loose, and you can still have that competitive edge and competitive drive. One doesn't have to go without the other. And so I think they really helped shape that for us. Um, obviously the 2017, world championships coming off our negotiations and winning uh, with two days of practice going into the tournament and then the gold. Obviously, that will obviously have a special place in our hearts in 2018 and specifically the roles that we played in, in helping the team win. So I would say those are probably some of the top ones for me. And then, yeah, just, I mean, you look back in your career and the medals are obviously amazing and you chase those with, with you know, you put all your work into winning and it's never guaranteed, but to be able to accomplish some great things with amazing teammates that we've had along the way, um, we, we look back and those are the things we're going to miss is our teammates and the relationships and uh, road trips and just the, the fun things that happen. <laughs> um, so we'll miss them the most for sure, but uh, it'll be, I think, really start to start, really start setting in in the next day or two that, you know, it's, we, we've made this decision. <laughs> There's no going back now. Well, I needless to say, you guys have taken home so much hardware on the international stage with, with USA Hockey, and that's amazing. But you've also impacted the game for future generations in, you know, standing up for women's rights in this game. And I read an article this morning or an interview where you guys said you wanted to leave the jersey better than you found it. And I think you have definitely done that. Will you continue to fight for women's rights in this game post-retirement? I, absolutely. I think, uh, I mean, Jocelyn's on the PWHPA board right now, so I'll let her speak to that since she's very well versed in all the meetings. And everything. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, we're, we're retiring from playing competitively, but we're still going to keep our hands in the game in whichever way we can and try to make a difference. And as far as uh, professional hockey goes, I think that's the next big step for women's hockey uh, in the world and creating one viable professional league in the in North America with the best players in the world. And so we're, we're really excited about where the PWHPA is going. Uh, the partnerships that we've recently just announced with um, the, the Rangers and the Leafs and hopefully yeah. more down the road coming. And so it's really just an exciting time for women's hockey right now. I, I wanna ask you both, uh, you know, you've been doing this for a long time since you were small girls and you've come all the way up, you've played at the highest levels. How has the level of play changed over the course of your lifetimes? Because I'm sure that I, I know when I'm at the rink, I see a lot. And there, they, there you are. I mean, that's Aww. a great shot. I love that. <laughs> I see a lot of little girls who look like that at the rink trying to play. And it seems like the level of play has changed dramatically over the last couple of decades. How do you both feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I think you can look at that in two parts. In 2010, when we really we're starting out our careers the the national team i think there was one player who grew up playing girls hockey 
uh, and the rest of us played up playing, uh, grew up playing boys hockey. And now if you look at the makeup of the team, it's about half and half or maybe a little bit more than half have grown up playing girls hockey. So there's, there's more opportunities for girls to play hockey with girls and it's becoming more competitive. So there's that side of it. But then I think just the, when you look at the tip of the spear and the elite female hockey players, they've just continued to get better over the years and the game is faster. It's becoming more skilled. Players can shoot it harder. The goalies are be are getting better. So it's just overall, I just in our time, it's gotten so much better and it's just going to continue to do that and grow. Yeah. And we've had to adapt our game throughout our careers. Um, we were never the most swift of foot, um, <laughs> but we, we had to figure out our training and um, figure out how to get faster midway through our career. And we were able to do that. Um, but it's, it's definitely a faster game. I mean, Kendall Coyne on the U S team, uh, Renata fast on team Canada. I mean, there's just so many fast players and you just have to be able to play at that speed. The key to skating fast, though, was having very tight skates. And I was reading an article from you guys. You both commented on your dad and his affinity for tying your skates way too tight. So when you guys do up your kids' skates, are you going to make sure to tie them just a little bit too tight? Well, I got to be able to get them on Mickey without him throwing a fit right now. He's only two. So I think next year might be the best year to to get him in his skates. I don't know how this winter's going. It's pretty cold out right now, anyways. No, Nelson likes to put them on, but he only likes to like we got to we got to skate fast, and then he's having fun, and then we get his feet on the ice. But yeah, we'll we'll probably tie him pretty tight. <laughs> I love that. So we can see the book on the shelf uh, behind you guys. You've got a book coming out. Why? Why did you guys want to take pen to paper? And for any viewers out there that aren't aware of this book coming out, what what will this book provide? And, and really, what was the inspiration for it? Yeah, so our book comes out February 23rd. It's called Dare to Make History. And we actually had some people tell us we, we should write a book and that we had a compelling story. We never find ourselves that interesting or think, thinking that we had a... <laughs> A good story to tell but it's been a, a two-year process and it's been pretty reflective especially during covid it's really allowed us more and more time it gave us a lot of time to devote to the writing process and just everything we wanted to put in there and i think through the editing process and talking to our editors and figuring out what stories they wanted more of and i think what people will enjoy is that we don't talk about, yes, we talk about our successes, but a big thing is learning from our failures and not everything went perfectly growing up and no one wants to hear about a perfect story, but then there's the, the flip side of it of being great hockey players, but also being great people and trying to make a difference and make an impact along the way. Hey, you, you've both had a little time now since the gold medal in 2018. And that to me was like a special moment because you had such heartbreak in those in those Olympic tournaments leading up to that, and then to cap it off in the way that you did, Jocelyn, you had that crazy goal. That I mean, that's what that was. <laughs> that was those games, Canada U.S. games in the Olympics, or just they're really oh, they're amazing. They're in, they're they're really indulged in my memory. Like I, I I really remember them very well. What are your memories of a couple of years now removed from that when you think back to that? Because that must have been just such a high after the heartbreak of of a couple's. Olympic times before that. Yeah, I mean that's the beauty of sports is you can you can train your whole life and you're not guaranteed to win a medal or you know win a gold medal and so I just think back to the adversity that our team had to overcome um, leading up to the Olympics and just how proud we are of our entire team and then to have the individual roles that we did in that game uh, you dream about moments like that as an athlete you dream about you know <laughs> hockey or out on the frozen pond you dream that you're going to have a moment like that um, and luckily we did and we had moments like that in the same game um, which <laughs> makes it pretty special for us and our family but yeah I just think back to the celebration and um, the the small moments you get to share with your family on the ice hugging teammates and um, pretty much the only time I feel like it's acceptable for grown adults to behave in that manner um, <laughs> but it's pretty special just to look back at pictures and see see video clips of the celebration and uh, and know all the hard work that went into that moment. 
Well, it was quite a moment, and I still remember you guys coming here afterwards, yeah. and I, the, right. the entire staff was like waiting at the front <laughs> doors to sort of welcome you guys into the building after such a huge accomplishment, uh, one of many for the both of you, making an impact on the ice and off of it. I am very excited to see what both of you do next, but the book is called Dare to Make History. It comes out later this month. Make sure you check that out. All the best, ladies. Congratulations yeah. on an amazing career, and uh, stop by any time. That's right. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.